Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will be looking at my recent makes that I completed over the last two to three weeks. And this includes two tops, a pair of shorts, and a tunic. Now three of these makes are by Sinclair, simply because I was a pattern tester for two different pieces. So I thought I would share those with you now that they have been released. And so let's go ahead and just get started with what I'm wearing now, which is the non-Sinclair pattern. And this is by Sewaholic, and this is the Pendrel blouse. And I am wearing the version that has the double ruffle. It is princess seam, which you probably can't really tell because of this print, but this print is so cute, is it not? It is a rayon poplin, and I got it at Style Maker Fabrics, and unfortunately it's sold out. I know this because I went to buy more yesterday and it was sold out. The only thing is, is if you have a mistake and you have to take your seam ripper, it is super easy to cause this fabric to run. And I'll stick a picture in, and I have a few of those in some places, and it's sad. I mean, I notice it, but people, hopefully aren't gonna be looking that close and see it, but that is something to point out with this fabric is it, it's on the more delicate side in that respect. But as for the pattern, it is super, I think it's pretty easy to put together and the fit is really good. Now I cut a 10 out as my base size and that was based on my bust measurement and then I graded in to an eight at the waist and then back out to a 10 at the hips. And I am wearing it tucked into a black pencil skirt, which is store-bought. Let me back up here so you can see. Yep. I really, really like it. Now there's no closure, just to point out, and it's really not that difficult. It's not difficult at all to pull over your head without any type of closure. Um, as I said, the fit is really good. The only thing is that I would adjust for in, when I make it again is that my armhole feels a bit tight, like I need to drop it. So I will probably, I will do that on the next one I make. But other than that, I am really pleased with it. The, for this version, the, this is the princess ruffle, if you will, because it is actually sewn inside of the princess seam and then you have the sleeve ruffle which is sewn in the armhole well basically and so that's how it's constructed and it's just really easy to do a bit of gathering and I thought I, I like how I decided to use black as a contrast for one of the ruffles um, when I was looking at it I thought oh maybe I should have done black for the the princess seam ruffle and then continue with the print on this, on the sleeve ruffle. And when I make it again, I will do that and see how that looks. But I like it and I, I really like it with the black pencil skirt. It just ties in together nicely. So the neckline and the armholes are finished by using binding. And the pattern has pieces for you that you just cut strips out on the bias and you fold it in half and you um, sew the raw edges together around the neckline and the armhole. And it's at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and then you flip it to the inside and then you top stitch that down. Now, I felt that 5 8 of an inch seam allowance didn't leave a lot of room, uh, a lot of binding to flip to the inside. So I went ahead and stitched mine on at 3 8 and I like that better, though I think when I make this again, I'll, I can go ahead and stitch at a half inch and that will still give me enough room and not have too much. This is what it looks like on the inside, see? I think. But I, I like I like this method. I didn't want to use pre-packaged um, bias binding because I uh, sometimes I find that it can be a little bit heavy and stiff depending on the type of fabric you're working with. And since I'm wor this is a lightweight rayon poplin, I felt it more appropriate to use um, the fabric itself. But 
On the other hand, you know, when you cut things on a bias, you take up a lot of room on your fabric. Now, they aren't terribly long pieces, but these, these ruffles are cut on the bias, and especially this one, this one's a monster. It takes a lot of fabric, believe it or not, to make these, these ruffles. So, um, for that reason, you do need a little bit more fabric than you would probably anticipate for this little blouse because you are cutting some pieces on the bias and bias pieces are little fabric hogs. Let me um, pull out so you can see. There you go. That's how it looks. Not tucked in. Standing on my tippy toes so you can see it. So this pattern has a few different options with regard to the sleeves. You can have it with the double um, ruffle version as I've made, or you can have just a cap sleeve. So the sleeve is a bit different. You don't use the same pattern pieces as, as this one. Um, it's, it's really cute. I think I'll probably give that one a go as well. Or you can just do a sleeveless shell, which I think all are great options. It's a great pattern. I am going to, I believe, hack this into a dress. So I will put in place for elastic and then have the skirt like that. I think this would make a really lovely dress. So I'm probably going to do that with the new fabric I ordered. It's also a rayon. I'll pop a picture. It's the Cubist in paprika colorway, also from Style Makers. I really love that print. I made a top, no, I made a tunic out of that um, using a Seamwork Mesa pattern. And I like how that came out. I just think the, the Cubist faces are so cute. Anyway, let me move on to the next, uh, let's just look at the tunic, which I'm kind of dreading putting on because it is summer here and I made that for the fall, but oh well. Okay, so I've changed and now I'm wearing the iris tunic from Sinclair Patterns. And this I made because, well, this is was a pattern test pattern. And when I saw, I knew I wanted to make a long sleeve bishop sleeve version of the tunic to wear with leggings and boots for the fall. So it's hot right now. Let me stand up. I have a step stool so you can see. Let me go back. See, I don't have my leggings on. It barely <laughs> covers my bits. So, um, basically, it. I will, when I make it again, I'm going to lengthen it just a little bit because um, I like my tunics to be, um, to cover my behind but then have like another inch or two to be on the safe side, if you know what I mean. But I'm still wearing leggings, you know, it's not like I'm not wearing any pants, it's just, that's just me, I guess I'm really modest, I don't know. Anyway, you can make either um, a three quarter length version, the long sleeve version like I did, or you can um, have a flutter sleeve, or a straight, more like a straight sleeve. Now this is a raglan sleeve, I sh should mention. You cannot really tell because of the busy print. But it's a raglan, so it means this, the um, seam for the, the sleeve is, comes in here. And um, so you could have the straight raglan, the flutter sleeve, or the bishop sleeves. So this was the, the test version that I made, and the sleeves um, are t like maybe an inch too short, and she ended up lengthening them, so that's great. Sinclair has either petite, regular, or tall versions of her pattern, so that's really great. Um, I, of course, use the tall version because I'm five foot nine and a half, and so things are longer where they need to be, and that makes my life a lot easier. This I made in a double brushed poly. I got this at Joanne. If you go to Joanne, you probably recognize it. And then I used the um, neckline and the cuffs, just basic black as contrast. But it is super comfortable. I believe I cut a base size six and I did not 
add any I didn't grate out at the hips or the waist like I usually do. Usually in Sinclair patterns, I start with a six if I if it's at the bust. I grade out to an eight sometimes and then definitely um, a 10 at the hips. I didn't need to do that because this is a swing style, meaning there's a lot of ease. It's not a tent, but you see. So it's great. It's, it's, it's a really great pattern and I'm definitely gonna make another one, I'm planning to, for the fall and I need to take this off because it's hot it's hot okay so next step are the next two patterns that I've made and one is the Jakarta shorts from Sinclair which was also a pattern test and I'm just gonna stand up so you can see but I'm gonna have to put in some close-ups of the shorts for you um, these shorts are really cute. You can make a long version, um, a shorter version like I did, and you could roll up the hem and you can have patch pockets, well patch pockets in the back, pockets in the front, there's a lot of top stitching, I've got a, t a tab with a button, there's no real buttonhole, it's just tacked on basically. I love these shorts, they're so cute, and I made them using a chambray that I got at uh, last year in Germany. I found this motorcycle printed chambray and I thought it'd be great for these shorts. And then the waistband, here, so the waistband is a yoga waistband, and I've been really digging the yoga waistbands. The first time I made one was in the sunset pants also by Sinclair but there is a piece of elastic sandwiched in here it's a inch and a quarter piece and then it's I use double brush poly because it's super soft and I like it because there's no gathers above the um in the waistband that the gathers are all forced down here to the pant part although it's not terribly gathered um, but it's super comfortable. So you have the option of making a more wider band like the one I've got on, or you can do, I think there's a piece of do, you could do half of that if you wanted, whatever you want really. But it's great. These shorts are super comfortable. I didn't need to make any adjustments, which was crazy. I find that I don't really need to make any adjustments with Sinclair, which is why you see me kind of obsessed and just keep making Sinclair patterns because they just fit so well. So I'm sorry, you guys. Um, this is also a Sinclair pattern. This is the cachet t-shirt. I decided that if I was going to be taking pictures for these shorts that I should make a top also by Sinclair. And so this is so easy and so quick to make. I mean, it's just two, pa it's well, three pieces if you count the neckband. But you got the front bodice, the back bodice, the neckband, you just fold under the sleeve hem, stitch that down. Oh my gosh, this is incredibly just comfortable and easy. And I'm going to make another one into a t-shirt dress because oh, they're so cute. This, this fabric, I can't think if you can tell, but it's a I'll have to put a little video in because this has some subtle silver sparkle. I got this jersey in New York last year at Mood and I just, I bought, I don't know, a yard of it and I didn't know, I don't know why, you should just never buy a yard of fabric because there's really not a lot you can do with just one yard. So um, I've told myself when you buy fabric, you have to buy three yards at least because that because it doesn't do you any favors to buy one yard and you can't use it right but anyway i was able to squeeze this top out of one yard so awesome i love it love 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 it and they, there is an option to color block this top if you want add a patch pocket i'm just not a fan of patch pockets on t-shirts that's just me personal preference. Anyway, so yeah, these are my four makes. So we had the Pendrel Top by Soaholic, the Iris Tunic by Sinclair, 
the Jakarta shorts by Sinclair and the Cachet shirt by Sinclair. Now there was a fifth make that I did make in the last few weeks and that is the the iris, another iris, a pleated top by Forget Me Not Patterns. Now I didn't share it here because that has its own separate video with a sell along, so I will link it if you want to check that out. But um, yeah, so I this is kind of my first video where I've shared multiple makes because I've never been somebody to just turn out projects, but I was able to in the last few weeks, so I thought I'd share. So. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Bye.